Hi, welcome to the Power in Motion YouTube channel. I'm Nick, and today we're going to talk about the iGo Extreme 3.0. iGo's third generation of their Extreme lineup, this bike is an extremely good value. With its 4.5 inch fat tires and its 500 watt rear hub motor, this bike is powerful for a great cost. So come ride with me today and we'll find out more. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like my Jordan. Give me the rock and I'm scoring. Hey, came from the bottom, that's foreign. I swear that I'm up for the sun in the morning. Hey, I got a flex. I need a Nike bag, give me the check. I need the money and power, respect, but I promise I'm repping the oak to the dead. Hey. Hi, welcome to the Power in Motion YouTube channel. I'm Nick, and today we're out here at the Glenmore Reservoir. It's been completely frozen over, it's got a nice layer of powder on top, and we've been ripping around this brand new iGo Extreme 3.0, the third generation of the Extreme series. This bike has always been a great value bike from iGo. With its fat tires and its 500 watt rear hub motor, this bike has the great output for the price. Now, the Extreme Series has always been a big step up year to year. The 1.0 is a ghost compared to what it is now. With this hydro formed aluminum frame and the 4.5 inch fat tires, this bike is not only a great looking bike, but it's also a great performing bike. Going over some of the, co the components on this bike, starting in the cockpit, we have some slip on ergonomic grips, great for mountain biking oriented purposes. We have the electrical cutoff mechanical disc brakes. Now, when I pull the levers on this brake, it's gonna cut out the motor, so that way the motor doesn't kick out with its powerful 83 newton meters of torque. It has a brand new 500C display, the mono style, so it's not the same color display that we see on a lot of other iGo bikes like the Oka. Uh, it still has all the same information you might want out of it, like your battery level, your speed, your trip, and your odometer all in a compact form factor. With the throttle sitting right next to it, you have power on demand with this bike, being able to get up to 32 kilometers an hour on the fly. One other great feature about the cockpit of the Extreme is the adjustable stem. Now this not only accommodates a bunch of different rider sizes, allowing the bike to either become longer or shorter, it also offers different riding positions. So if I'm riding this as a commuter to work every day, it'd be great to have an upright seating position, just bringing those bars back, but you know what? I kind of want to rip around on it on the weekend. Putting those bars back forward allows me to pump the suspension on this bike. Moving down through the bike, we have the beautiful brand new metal fenders on the 3.0, which stop any kind of debris, snow, water, etc., from flying up onto you and the bike, keeping you dry and clean. The Juggernaut 4.5 inch tires from Kenda are an excellent tire for all season riding allowing you to lower those tire pressures all the way down to 10 PSI, getting a beautiful traction, especially in deep snow like this. The 180 millimeter mechanical disc rotors allow a lot of stopping power, especially with these big, heavy tires. Now, one of the things that I go change this year about the wheel set is not only the tire width, but also the rim. It's a hollow type rim, uh, adding a lot of weight savings to the wheel, which allow you as a rider to go longer distances and conserving more battery from the motor, allowing you to get the more distance out of this bike. The RST guide suspension on this bike is a great entry level fork, allowing you to lock it out on the fly. So if you're more of a rigid pathway rider, you can lock out the fork on the fly, but if you're descending, doing some more trail or technical riding, you can unlock that fork and access 100 millimeters of travel on this bike. The biggest difference between the iGo 2.0 and the 3.0 is the overall frame. They offered for a lower step through in the front and an internal battery instead of an external battery on the previous iteration. This 48 volt 13 amp hour battery offers a range of around 50 to 60 kilometers, much like its predecessors, but in a much sleeker form factor allowing you to easily pop the battery in and out of the frame on the fly. Whether you're charging it or switching it out for another battery for a longer ride, this bike is really, really good for distance and battery consumption. Down in the bottom bracket of the bike, we see this big housing. No, it's not a mid-drive, but it does house the 22 amp controller, allowing you to pump upwards of 750 watts into that 500 watt motor. So you get a little bit of extra torque and a little bit of extra speed, especially on those steeper climbs. 
Moving towards the back of the bike, we have the Cell Royale saddle. It's a great alter all use saddle, whether you're doing mountain biking or you're commuting with it. It's a great comfortable saddle for anyone doing any kind of riding. We have the rear metal fender as well as the brand new rear rack built up more robust than the previous generations and with pannier rails allowing you to easily put panniers on and off the bike while keeping the top deck clear for any other kind of bags or back bike packing you might want to do with this bike it has a rear and front light on this bike as well as the 500 watt Bafang hub motor now this motor has been a tried and true motor for us. We've had it on several different bikes. It's the same one on the Boar Hunter, the same one on the Oka, as well as the Extreme at a much more value-oriented price. Moving on to the transmission of the bike, Igo opted for a smaller front chain ring. Now, what this means is that you might not be able to pedal as easily at a higher speeds, but at lower speeds and climbs, this bike will have no problem ascending those steeper climbs especially with the new Shimano high gear cassette in the rear. With the big granny gear, it allows you to pedal nice and slow up those steep ascents or plow through any kind of snow that might be killing your momentum. Some smaller features on the bike include the straps that comes with it, as well as the Welgo flat pedals, which are a great all around pedal, whether you're doing mountain biking or commuting, this is a good pedal to plant your foot on. It has two water bottle bosses on the seat tube of the frame as well, allowing you to add any kind of water bottle you want to the bike. Now, some people opt for a frame bag as well, which is great for bike packing oriented riding. You can certainly tech this bike out for those kinds of conditions with a front mounted bag as well as rear panniers. So who is this bike for? It's for anyone looking for a great value fat bike intermediate to entry level riders are going to have a great time on this bike plowing through snow or descending those backcountry trails with its 500 watt rear hub motor it's the same on higher performing bikes like the igo oka just with some of the electrical components cut down a bit like the 13 amp hour battery and a non-color hd display but it still comes with tons of features like the fenders the rear rack the front and rear lights uh, and a lockout suspension it's still a great value bike and it's something that I would ride if anyone's looking for a commuting or looking to get into fat bike riding, especially for uh, bike packing where you have this huge rack and tons of handlebar space to add anything you might need for your ride. So that's the iGo Extreme 3.0, part of iGo's fat bike lineup. This juggernaut of a bike will have the power output of 500 watts in the rear and the distance of a 48 volt 13 amp hour battery. This bike is great for anyone looking for a value bike, anyone looking for a fat bike or anything they want to ride in the winter time. If you have any more questions about the iGo 3.0, feel free to contact us at powermotion.ca. Thanks for riding with me today and have a great one.